Okay, Norm here for Vintage Guitar Minute at the All Guitar Network. This is a stunning 64 original stop tailpiece ES335. Nickel parts, early patent number pickups, original stop tailpiece, um, beautiful sunburst finish. This is a hardly played guitar. One of the nicest ones you'll ever see. The nice wide flat neck and uh you know not skinny but but you know flat and wide at the nut just a really cool guitar one of my favorites this came out of my warehouse this is the original case that came with it yellow interior it's really beautiful so this next one is from my warehouse. This is a beautiful ES125 TDC, double pickup, sharp cutaway, the cherry sunburst finish, stunning condition. And this has uh, original strap and original hang tags that came with it. And this is one of the nicest examples. The guy who used this most notably is George Thorogood. And this is a much nicer version. His was refinished white and all kinds of stuff was done. This is what his looked like before anybody played a million gigs with it and refinished it and all that. ES125 TDC. Original crocodile uh, soft case. Okay, this guitar here is a first year Gibson Hummingbird 1961. Beautiful condition. There was something taped over here, so there's a little bit of a shading on this. But this thing is the coolest with a wide flat neck, beautiful condition. A little marker over here, I'm not sure what that's from, but really killer. These are some of my favorite guitars. Mahogany sides and back, spruce top, gold uh, tuners, Clusons, um, and they're the single rings, uh, which is right over here. Uh, the later ones have two rings. This is a single ring set and the original adjustable bridge Just in beautiful shape. One of my favorite models. These things always sell really great guitar This is its original hard shell case So this is a stack knob jazz bass and this is a 1961 I believe and um uh, there's a story that goes with this one. This one is actually more of a player grade bass. It's a refin, but this is a bass that I've had probably for over 40 some odd years. When we came out, my band came out from Miami to California, we ended up playing a gig at um, Mo Austin's house, and it was for his son Randy. And we played, I was mainly the Hammond organ player, and uh, we had another bass, a three-knob jazz bass, but an early one, Sunburst. And what happened was we played the gig, we went outside, came back in for the next set, and our bass was gone. And uh, little Richard and his brother managed our band, and uh, we were missing our bass, and we couldn't play so Richard ended up buying this bass to replace the other bass for us and this is something that's sentimental that I've had for many many years great playing bass it is a refinish but it's it's killer this one we added the decal on this because this was used on some kind of TV show and they had removed the decal so they wouldn't say fender up there and so we put a, a repro decal on it but very cool bass um, you know, these sound great. Stack knob bass is the first, earliest of the jazz basses. And what the stack knob means is, is volume and tone, volume and tone on, on these things, where the later jazz basses have three knobs, volume, volume, tone. So this is a stack knob. Okay, so this is one of the first electric guitars ever made. This is a Rickenbacker frying pan. These are legendary. Um, it's a steel guitar uh, made in the generally the late 30s. Um, metal body. They call them a frying pan as a nickname because it kind of looks that way here with a round body and uh, obviously play slide. Rickenbacker is the company. And it says Rickenbacker Electro up on top. This is the original case. These are, this is probably the most sought after lap steel that you can get. 